As golf course groundskeeping professionals, you have many responsibilities maintaining the golf course and surrounding areas that provide enjoyment for a large number of people. The equipment, chemicals, and techniques you use can be hazardous. However, being aware of the hazards and taking action to prevent accidents is what safety is all about. It's called safety awareness. It takes a conscious effort to think safety before you perform any job. Think about the hazard, then take the steps to reduce the risk. This short video won't feature all the hazards associated with golf course maintenance, but it will give you an idea about some of the hazards and the action you need to take in order to prevent accidents. The first step is to dress properly for work. Always follow your club's policies. Generally, it's recommended you wear long pants to provide some degree of skin protection from tree branches, flying objects, and other hazards. Do not wear rings or bracelets, as these items often get caught in the equipment you use and can cause serious injury. Eye and hearing protection are basic items that may be required as well. Tennis shoes should not be worn. They are very comfortable, but they do not offer any protection from cuts, scratches, chemical spills, or other hazards. Leather top shoes should be worn when on the job. You may also be required to wear respiratory protection when working with chemicals, pesticides, herbicides, or other types of hazardous materials. Remember, when personal protective equipment is provided, it must be worn. Let's talk about the equipment used in your job. First of all, the equipment you use is professional equipment, and it's different than customer home use equipment. Never operate any powered equipment unless you have been trained and authorized by your organization. Report any accidents and injuries to your supervisors immediately so adequate medical treatment, if required, can be provided. Always maintain your equipment carefully and properly. Never begin a day of work without following your club's procedures for equipment maintenance. Depending upon the equipment used, your daily maintenance may include checking the oil, water, and fluid levels of the equipment. Belts or pulleys take a lot of wear and tear and should be checked daily for cracks or breaks. Also make sure they're positioned properly on the equipment pulleys. As soon as belts begin to stretch from use, replace them. Never operate the equipment if guards or other protective devices are missing or unserviceable. Unless a passenger seat is provided, do not allow people to ride on the carts, trailers, or any other equipment. Always report any safety hazard to your supervisor so it can be corrected. It's part of your job. Although various courses utilize different types of electrical handling equipment, one thing is certain, and that's battery charging. Each equipment and battery manufacturer has its own specific maintenance and operating procedures which should be followed at all times. Your facility has specific rules and policies. Make sure you understand them. Let's begin by reviewing some basic tips for handling industrial equipment batteries. The first rule is to always wear PPE, which includes gloves, a rubber apron, boots, and face and eye protection when handling, checking, filling, charging, or repairing batteries. Electrolyte used in batteries is a mixture of sulfuric acid and water and is quite caustic, meaning that it can easily burn your skin. Keep open flames away from batteries and never try to check the electrolyte level while smoking or with a lighter or match. Use a non-sparking flashlight or other approved lighting and never create sparks near batteries. Be prepared for an electrolyte spill and always have adequate water available to flush your skin or other affected area in case of such an occurrence. Water applied quickly and continuously will prevent serious injury to the skin. Quick medical attention is necessary to assure proper care and treatment. Splashes to the eye can be avoided by wearing proper eye and face protection. However, if electrolyte is splashed into the eyes, wash the eyes with water for 15 minutes and get immediate medical attention. Spills should be cleaned up immediately by using a strong neutralizer such as baking soda. This will neutralize the acid and make it safe to clean or flush from the floor or other surfaces. 
When changing or repairing plugs or receptacles that are connected to the charging equipment, be sure to shut off the power first. This will prevent a short circuit and arcing of an electrical spark. Arcing can cause an explosion and fire. When mixing acid to prepare electrolyte, always pour the acid into water slowly and never pour water into the acid. If water is added to acid, it will not readily mix and will splash the acid due to the great difference in the specific gravity of the two liquids. Always store acid in plastic or glass containers. Proper handling of batteries is essential to prevent injuries and to prevent battery damage or electrolyte spills. Make sure that charging plugs and receptacles are properly locked and all other connections tight, secure, and free from friction. A loose connection may mean sparking or arcing near explosive gas mixtures. Double check the charger and make sure it matches the voltage and amperage of the equipment battery. Voltage and amperage are found on the equipment data plate and on the charger data plate. Before disconnecting or connecting batteries to a charger, make sure the charger is in the off position. If it's left on, you could be seriously injured. Make sure cart batteries have the correct water level. A battery can be ruined if it's without water. Corrosion and defective cables add to the power drain on the battery, so keep the batteries clean and cables in good condition. If you're not sure what to check on the equipment, read the manufacturer's operating instructions or ask your supervisor. With mowers, edgers, and trimmers, it's extremely important to check the blades. Blades must be sharp. If they're dull, it puts a strain on the equipment and will not perform as well. Dull cutting edges are also safety hazards. Be sure to check all safety devices on the equipment. Missing guards or other safety devices can result in accidents. Look under the equipment for wires or other items that may have jammed the blades or pulleys. No matter what, never try to clear a jam or put your hands under a mower or other piece of equipment unless the motor is turned off. Mowers often get jammed and the driver stops the mower and puts the transmission in neutral. The blades aren't moving, so the driver assumes it must be okay to check them out. Do not attempt to clear jams or work on any equipment unless the motor is turned off. If you must work on a piece of equipment, take the key out of the ignition so no one else can turn it on accidentally. When you start a riding mower, the only way to safely start the motor is from the driver's seat with the transmission in neutral and the handbrake on. When you leave your mower, take the key out to prevent someone from taking a joyride. After starting the mower or during operations, if you notice an unusual noise or unusual vibrations, stop the mower, turn off the motor, and check it out. It's better to delay mowing until you find out what's wrong with the equipment. A minor repair is much better than running a defective mower until it needs a complete overhaul. Of course, you know that the discharge side of the mower is potentially hazardous as small rocks and other objects can be ejected, causing injuries. Keep everyone at a distance when you're mowing. If anyone is struck by rocks ejected from the mower, it's your fault. Keep everyone away, and of course, if you see any objects in your way, stop and remove them. Be on the lookout for sprinkler heads, cans, rocks, pieces of wood, and golf balls. It's a good idea to first walk the area before you start mowing or trimming. There are many unseen hazards, so be alert when mowing with a rider mower. When moving on an incline or slope, be sure to mow across the face of the slope, avoiding angles that can cause you to tip over. When using a hand mower, always push the mower. Don't pull it, because one slip could easily put you under the blade. There are some important safety considerations to follow when using power equipment. First, never refuel a hot motor. Allow it to cool before refueling. Keep a fire extinguisher close at hand in case a fire ignites. Only use an approved safety can for flammable liquids. An approved container is one that has a spring-loaded lid to prevent spills, and it has a flame arrester on the inside of the can as shown here. There are thousands of unapproved gas cans which can be purchased anywhere. Make sure the gas container you use is approved. In addition to mowers, string trimmers are very useful in trimming grass, weeds, and brush in hard to reach areas. Such trimmers also cause many injuries every year. 
Eye injuries are the most common, so eye protection is a must. Full face shields, such as the type shown here, are recommended due to the flying dirt, stones, and debris made by trimmers. The trimmers make a lot of noise, so hearing protection is also mandatory. There are other types of PPE available, so be sure to follow your organization's policies and procedures. Trimmers require daily maintenance as well. Fuel, oil, and other fluid levels must be checked as required. Be sure you know the proper mix of fuel and oil if your trimmer requires oil in the fuel system. Also, make sure the guards are in place and never remove them. Check to see if the recommended trimming line is on the spool or you have replacement spools with you on the job. When starting the trimmer, be sure no one is nearby and hold the trimmer with the trimming spool near the ground. Earlier, we mentioned leather top shoes. When using the trimmer, you'll discover why leather top shoes should be worn. Don't forget about the possibility of snakes. In many areas of the country, snakes are a potential hazard, so be on the lookout for snakes in the brush, high grass, or other areas. Your job may require the use of chemicals, herbicides, fertilizers, vegetation killers, and a variety of other chemicals. Carefully follow the directions on the chemical label. Your employer maintains a list of material safety data sheets on all the chemicals used. Familiarize yourself with this information so you'll be able to make the right decision when storing, handling, and using these materials. Proper disposal of the chemical containers is mandatory, so follow the rules on disposing of the containers. Above all, take the precautions necessary to keep the chemicals out of your breathing zone. Keep chemicals out of ditches, ponds, streams, and other areas that may harm the environment. There's no secret to landscape safety. Always follow your facility's policies and procedures, as well as the manufacturer's recommendations. They are the best sources of information for safety and long life of the equipment. If you're not sure about something, ask your supervisor. Your job and the equipment you use is too important to be left to chances. You are the most important part of any safety program. Think about safety, and if it can't be done safely, don't do it. Thank you.